There's a message stirring in me that's been building for quite some time uh, leading up to this, the whole transition, transformation, being who God's called us to be, doing what He's called us to do, the church rising to the occasion, all of those things. Um, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a un, I'm a unload on you just a second. I, how many of y'all... At the typical thought of New Year's, kind of have the same thought and idea. You know, I'm glad last year's over. Don't know what this year's going to hold. Lord, we ask that you bless and we pray for that couple right there, right now. Lord, whatever their need is and whatever it is, Father, I'm asking you to intervene for them right now in Jesus' name. Whatever their crisis is, Lord, we know that you are Lord over all. And so, God, I thank you for that right now, that you are Lord over all. Bless that precious little couple right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I know, I mean, I don't know, we got to stand up for each other. Uh, Lord, I don't know what was going on, but it sounded serious there for a second, so we want to just ask the blessing of God upon that. But back to the thought of New Year's and last year. Melissa and I sat up in our chairs, and um, we have some new neighbors next door. Haven't had the opportunity to meet them yet, but they like fireworks and big ones. Stuff was falling on our roof. Melissa said, what is that? I said, that's leftover fireworks falling on our roof. I hope none of it catches us on fire. How many of those changes come? And how many does change scare you just a little bit? Don't lie up in church now. We all, we all have that, that small level of anxiety when it comes to anticipation and you hear uh, so many different preachers are the worst at it we all think we've got to stand up and come up with a new year's word we have to come up with a new year's thought we have to try to launch our people so to speak God has given us care over into the next year with hope and, and prosperity. And, you know, I don't know anybody that wakes up on New Year's Day and says, boy, I hope I have a rotten year this year. <laughs> but we all do wake up with an anticipation with, God, give us a good year this year. I, I, am I right? Some of us wake up and realize that last year was hard. Some of us realize that last year, some of our loved ones are no longer here with us to experience this year. There are, are the people that had such a bad time last year, they're not certain what this year holds, but just as long as it ain't last year. The old saying goes like this, I didn't stay up to watch the new year in, I stayed up to make sure the old one left. <laughs> all, all, all of it's true. Uh, we can find ourselves in there. All, all of it's true. So as I found myself during the week and even earlier, um, thinking, God, what, 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 do we, what do I want to embrace this year? Has anybody else ever thought that already? You know, God, what is your plan for me this year? I know I say this nearly every year, but probably 15 or so years ago, they, the, the newspaper asked Brother Larry Teal what his New Year's resolution was, and I shall never forget it. He said, I want to be closer to God at the end of this year than I was last year. Remember that, Brother Larry? But, but it's been a long time. It, it's been a long time. I guess it could have been 35 years ago because I've been hanging out here for 40-something, 40 44. 
Boy, time flies, don't it? Boy, when you say it like that, I'm getting to be an old man. When I can remember something that was said 35 years ago and still be old enough to, wow. So, what do we want to embrace this year? What is my strategy? What is my strategic approach to this year that's going to cause me to be in a better position than I was last year? Make no mistake about it, the Bible teaches us that we go from glory to glory, from faith to faith, that we are always in a process of moving up. If you're standing still, you're backing up. And that, that's not just a statement. If you're standing still, you're backslidden. If you're not constantly pushing forward into new things of the, of the Spirit, then we are going to find ourselves in need when the world presents itself, because look at your neighbor and say, it's coming. I wish I could stand here and tell you that for the next 362 days that you're going to have spiritual bluebirds swarming and swinging around your head singing, I love Jesus. But I know that's not the case. We're going to fight some battles this year, no doubt about it. We're going, to, we're going to move from where we are, one way or the other, no doubt about it. So we need to have some sort of strategic idea about what am I going to do. This is going to be just a practical, simple word today, but it's another one of these that I pray that lodges in your spirit that whenever the opportunity comes for you to decide what do I do about this, that you don't let it fall to a random thought and a hopeful idea, but you have some sort of strategic plan according to the Word of God that's going to advance you from where you are to where you're going and become who God's got you to be when you get there. I don't, want who, I don't like showing up at stuff on accident. Right? I don't like to... I'm, I was an electrician by trade for the first several years of my work, uh, working time and, and I used to hate it when we'd be troubleshooting some electrical problem and then it would all just kind of like fix itself and start working. How many, how many electricians we have in here knows what I'm talking about? And you look at it and while you're grateful that it's working, it's driving you nuts inside because you didn't know what you did to fix it. That's kind of the same way going through life that we make it through something but we turn around and look back and we don't have a clue how we got through it. So we blame it on God. God, if it wouldn't have been for you and if you're West Court and you're going, but boy, I wish I'd have known, I wish I'd had a revelation and understanding something. But I believe that God's going to call us in His last days to become very strategic according to His Word if we're going to move forward with the progress. So here we go. 1 Peter 4, verse 12, I'm throwing this out there. You don't have to go to it because it's not on my list. It said, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Don't, don't, get, don't get all upset and tight whenever a fiery trial comes. That's our nature. We, nobody likes fiery trials. But he said, don't get upset when that happens. I've got something bigger working. There's something else greater happening that you can't even see yet. He went on to say, he says, as though some strange thing has happened to you. Can I tell you that it happens to us all? Yeah, yeah. But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory, somebody say, His glory is revealed that you might also be glad with exceeding joy. We're going to talk about His glory and the coming glory of the Lord a little bit today. How many of y'all believe that the glory of God is going to fill the whole earth? Does the Scripture not say that it will? It tells us it will. So turn with me. Here we go. We're going to launch. Uh, the book of Exodus chapter 14. Book of Exodus chapter 14. I pray that you have a copy of your Bible with you today, whether it's on phone, electronic, or uh, if you got Papa with you, but what, whatever. I pray that you've got your Bible with you. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 14, verse 1. 
Now, this particular chapter, we're going to cover this chapter in, in parts today, if I can. And I saw a few things. How many started reading your Bible through already this year? You done got a good start on it. I love when I read something I've read over and over and over, and then all of a sudden something else happens. That happened. Exodus chapter 14, verse 1. Then the Lord gave Moses, and oh, by the way, I'm going to be reading out of the NLT today. I, I, I want to use that translation because it, it uses some practical terms that, that I went back and checked, and, and they were accurate, and they, they brought it to light. Then the Lord gave these instructions to Moses. He told them to go and turn back by the camp, and he named those names. I'm not going to try to do all that. He said, uh, camp there along the shore across from Baal Siphon. Verse 3 says, watch this. Here's where I want us to really start paying attention. Then Pharaoh will think. Pharaoh represents the devil. Pharaoh represents that spirit that's opposite of God, opposite of us. Then Pharaoh will think the Israelites are confused. They are trapped in the wilderness. Now, I want you to notice that God told them to go to this place. They didn't just show up there. It was a strategic place God told them to go and then, this is why. So Pharaoh will think that they are confused. That they are trapped in the wilderness. Verse 4, watch this, here it comes, watch. And once again, I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will chase after you. Can I tell you that I think that, the, that God, not that he's playing with our lives, but can I tell you that I think that God certainly ordains and allows things to come our way sometimes? Amen. Look at the word right there. It says, I have planned this in order. Watch this. Once again, I will harden Pharaoh's hearts and he will chase after you. Now why? Why would God do that? Let's read on the next, the next part of that. I have planned this in order to display my glory through Pharaoh and his whole army. I want to stop right here and tell this congregation that we serve a God that is so powerful, that is so full of glory himself, that he can take the enemy of our soul and cause his glory to be shown through him. You say, boy, how can that happen? I don't know, but that's a powerful God right there. He's bad all by himself. When he said that, I, he said, I will show, I will display my glory through. Somebody say through. Pharaoh and his whole army. Watch. After this, the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. What the United States of America above all the countries in the world needs to come back to the understanding of is that the Lord our God is the Lord our God. The Bible says blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. There's so many voices, there's so many people that would make themselves God that there's only one man that could be God and that was Jesus. There's been a lot that have decided they wanted to be, but they can't. But I want you to get this right here. He said, after this, after what? After I show my glory through that which was sent to, to harm you. After my glory shows up to that that you've interpreted was sent to kill me. After all of that is said and done, and you're still here with me, then my glory is going to be shown, not just to you, not just to your enemy, but it says right here, he says that my glory will be shown that I am the Lord. That's his plan for the world to see that he is God. Can somebody say amen to that? Let's look down at Exodus 14, chapter 5. When the word reached the king of Egypt that the Israelites had fled, Pharaoh and all of his officials changed their mind. What have we done letting all of these Israelite slaves get away? So Pharaoh harnessed his chariot and called up his troops. Watch this, look at verse 7. He took with him 600 of Egypt's best, the King James Version says choice, 
chariot. Why am I going to make a point out of this? Because when the devil realizes that you have gotten away, <laughs> has anybody in here been like a bird snared that has been rescued by the fowler? My soul escaped like a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are escaped. There comes a time in all of our lives that the snare has been broken and we are escaped to be who God has called us to be. I don't know what your snare was. I don't know what had you bound. I don't know what had you in its grip. I don't know what had called on you that you were not going to make it. I don't know what put a bid in for your life, but I can tell you in the name of the Lord and by the Spirit of God that the snare has been broken and you are escaped because our help is in the name of the Lord. Yes, sir, it is. I thank God my soul is escaped. Is anybody else in here glad that your soul has escaped? Come on, come on. You don't act like you're glad that you're not a property of the enemy no more. You don't act like you're glad that you're not under Pharaoh's grip anymore. You don't act like that you're on your way to heaven. There's 18 of you that's happy about going to heaven. That's amazing. Maybe before the day's over, we'll get saved. I don't know. I don't know. Watch this. He took 600 of Egypt's best chariots. That tells me that he's going to come after you with the thing that's the most effective on you. You could lay $10 million on this platform and walk out of here and leave it, and you could come back at any time you wanted to, and it all 10 million still be there if it was up to me. <clears throat> but before y'all think I'm Jesus Jr., there, there are some things that are kryptonite to me that I have to stay away from, that I have to be aware that that's how the enemy snared me before. I have to stay away from certain thoughts and stay away from certain channels and stay away from certain websites. Is anybody else in here brave enough to admit that you've got something that the enemy uses against you? Because when we acknowledge what it is and we put it under the blood of the Lamb, it's then and only then that we can continue to walk free from the snare that the devil has set for us. When the enemy was after the children of Israel, they sent 600 of the best fighters they had they sent 600 of the fastest horses that they had. They sent 600 of the most equipped chariots that they had. Those were the boon coons going after that which belonged to them. Are y'all hearing me this morning? I don't think I'm connecting. But there will be a day in our life that if you are set free that the enemy's going to send his best after you. Kent Christmas told a story one time about a, a pastor and he was, had a voice that was really being heard. Make a long story short, he had to take something by a particular lady's house that had just come and just joined the church. And the two or three people tried to get him not to go, but he had it under control. He was going to take care of it. He could do it. Kent told me that the pastor walked up to the door, rung the doorbell, and said when the woman opened the door, she was standing there without a stitch of clothes on. She made her proposition to him. He went inside, and as soon as it was over, she told him who she was, told him she was a witch, and that she and her husband had been sent there to take that church down, and said she looked at him and said, you were easy. Why was he easy? Because the devil sent one of the choice chariots after him. Church, are y'all listening to me? We've got to come to the place that we are strategic about our walk with God. 
that we're intentional about our walk with God, that we are aware of the fact that the enemy's trying to set traps for us and he knows how to do it. So along with the rest of the chariots of Egypt, each with its commander. Let's look at verse 10. As Pharaoh approached the, approached the people of Israel, looked up and panicked whenever they saw the Egyptians overtaking them. I, I, I'm sorry, I've got to go back. There's, 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 there's a man in this room today, right now, that the enemy has the chariot planned for you. Be aware. May the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you, especially in the next few days. That whenever it shows up, whenever this chariot presents itself, that you will recognize it for what it is and call on the name of the Lord. And here's the practical side of it. I hear bursting in my spirit, run like a dog. You run. You run. You're no match for it. As Pharaoh approached the people of Israel... He looked up and he panicked. The people of Israel panicked. <coughs> Excuse me. Panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them and they cried out to the Lord. I want you to get this picture in your mind. They are trapped between mountains and the Red Seas behind them and Pharaoh with his best fighters are closing in. That'd make anybody sweat. The, by this particular translation says... And they panicked when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them and they cried out. That word cried out means they prayed. They prayed out to the Lord and they said to Moses, Why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Have you ever noticed that when people get in the bind, they always won't blame the pastor? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Watch this. This is my favorite. Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? Leave us alone. Let us be slaves. Can I preach? You might get tired of me standing here encouraging and trying to tell you to be aware Standing here telling you, you can, you're better than this. Standing here telling you to read the Word of God. Standing here telling you to disobey your own thoughts and obey the Word of God. You may get tired of me telling you that there's a devil chasing you. You may get tired of hearing that there's trouble trying to take you out. You see, trouble don't just show up to show up. Trouble's sent to take you out. And I hope that you never come to the place that you say, come on, pastor, leave us alone. Let me stay in bondage to my bad temper. Let me stay in bondage to my drugs. Let me stay in bondage to my alcohol, to my, to my internet pornography. Let me stay in bondage. At least I'm happy. You say, Brother West, come on, you're taking some liberty that I don't think so. I'm telling you, when the scripture said that they looked at Moses and said, why don't you leave us alone? Quit telling me to be a better person. Quit telling me I'm better than this. Stop telling me that this is God's will. Here I am on the first Sunday of 2022 just hammering away on y'all. I'm sorry. But I want you to watch, I want you to watch what happens in the next few verses. I'm going to try to draw this picture for you that the children of Israel were disgruntled, they were dismayed, they were scared, they were, they were thinking they're fixing to die. They were felt like they had been led into a trap by this man called Moses. They didn't see the possibility of anything good happening. 
Has anybody in this room besides me ever been in a place where it didn't look like nothing good could come out of what's going on? But I want you to watch what goes on here. Moses is doing his best, and he's telling them, and put up, put up, verse, uh, put up verse 13 and 14 for me, please. Moses, it says... But Moses told the people, look, watch this. Don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. Back, back, back up. Don't go to that one yet. But Moses told the people. Notice it wasn't God telling them. Somebody say Moses is talking. Watch what he says. And y'all, I've got to try to set this up. Stay with me for a second. Moses has great intentions. And he says some good things. But I want you to know that that's not what God wanted them to do. You say, come on, pastor, what what do you mean? Well, Well, let's read it. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid, which is a good thing, right? How many's ever heard me say that? Uh, Just stand still and wait for the Lord. How many's ever heard me say that? The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. I've said all that because of that. But that wasn't the message God wanted them to hear. Put the next verse up. The Lord Himself will fight for you. This is Moses still talking. Just stay calm. That's good stuff. But watch God's response. Next verse. Then the Lord said, somebody say, then the Lord said. Why are you crying to me? Tell the people to get moving. Is it all right if I preach for a few minutes? Sometimes we have the best intentions with our positive encouragement. I want to encourage you as a people. You need encouraging as a people. Nobody needs to be beat down all the time or told what's wrong or told what to do and all that. We need to have an encouraging word put towards us sometime or another. Can you say amen? Moses said, be still. God's going to fight your battles. Moses said, stay calm. Don't get all upset and whatnot. And that's a good encouraging word. And I appreciate what Moses is doing. But Moses knew that it was time to do something else. And I want to drop this word in this congregation today that it's all right to pray, it's all right to cry, it's all right to hope, it's all right for all those things. But baby, sometime or another, God's going to say, all right, why are you crying to me? I've done done everything for you that needs to be done. I sent all those plagues to Egypt. I delivered you out of the hand of Pharaoh. I have done a miraculous thing in your eyes today. Why are you crying to me? It's time for you to get up and start moving. King James Version says it like this. He said, tell my people to go forward. There comes a day in every Christian's life that Philippians 4.13 has to come into play. Where Paul said, I can do all things, how? But we've got to do our part. We've sat around the campfire and cried holy enough. In the book of John, when Jesus was getting ready to be crucified, 
He went in with his disciples for the last time and he was in there and the story starts like this. It started out like, and supper being ended. Can I tell you that supper time has to come to an end sometime and service time has to begin? The Bible said, and supper time being ended, and he stood up disrobed and, co- and covered himself with a, a towel. A towel is a, a, an instrument of serving. And I hear the voice of the Lord shouting in my spirit today that while we have faced some difficulties in 2021, while some of you face some of the hardest times you've ever heard and seen in your life, while maybe 2022 might be a little bit uncertain to you, I hear the voice of the Lord telling, tell my people it's all right to pray and it's all right to cry, but sometimes sooner or later you got to quit praying. One translation even said it like that. He said, tell my people to quit praying and move. You know what the title of this message is today, Amanda, you ready? She calls me every week, every tomorrow by this this afternoon, she'd be saying, Dad, what was the title of the message? Move away from there. I want you to look at your neighbor sitting to your right and tell them you got to move away from there. I want you to look back the other side and tell them it's time to move. Look behind you. It's time for y'all to move. You've been camped out by this happened to me long enough. You've been camped out by this is the way my life is long enough. It's time for you to move away from the hurt of divorce. It's not going to change. So the only option we have is to quit crying about it and move away from it. You say, well, pastor, that's easy for you to say. You've never been divorced. Everybody's got their cross to bear. And I I don't mean Melissa's mine. I'm just saying. Move away from there. (laughs) But as I close, baby, if you would. (laughs) Y'all do know, y'all do know baby's my wife, right? (laughs) Several years ago, I was in Walmart and I ran into a guy. He walks up to me and he says, I just saw your worship leader on that other aisle over there and I knew who he was talking about. About that time, Melissa walks around the side and I reached over and kissed her and he goes, She's my wife. (laughs) But as I close, I'm not going to stand here and try to name what you've been camped out by for these many years, ever how many years it is. You see, some of you in actuality have been done with a particular problem for years, but yet because of the lingering around the pain and all it's still right on top of you you still get hurt when you think about it some things make you angry when you think about it Uh, there's still some people that you'll walk around that so you don't have to talk to them Um, there's still some hurt feelings and disappointments because it didn't turn out the way that you should you thought it should there's some of you in here that feels like God's let you down because you cried with your whole heart and and, and it didn't happen. Or perhaps you prayed for something for a long time and it just didn't take place yet. Your heart is sincere. You really want to be better. You, you really long for the day that you don't feel the pain of yesterday. There's some of you that are still camped out by failure. Something that you made a bad mistake a bad choice about there's not a soul in this room today that hadn't made a choice at some time or another that we wished we wouldn't have made the 
there's a few in here that you're still camped out by the fire of regret. Some of you are camped out by that fire. I wish I could do that over again. I'd do it different. Whatever, whatever the enemy has laid in front of you that he feels like you're trapped in. See, even at my best attempt at helping, even at Moses, at his best attempt at trying to get the children of Israel to calm down, realize that God was going to be at their rescue, realize that all they had to do was stand still and wait. There was a glory that was getting ready to be revealed. I'm going to go back to my pulpit, to the pulpit in a moment and read you a couple more scriptures. There was a glory that God was wanting to reveal that the only way it could be revealed is if He let the whole thing play itself out. You see, God had already showed them that He could keep them from destroying them whenever He put the pillar of fire between them the army and, and Israel, they couldn't get around it. God had already shown them, He was getting ready to show them that, you know, I can handle the devil. The Bible said that all them choice chariots that were sent, the Bible said in the King James Version said He, he took their wheels off. Another translation said He knocked His wheels off. Another translation said that, that they twisted the chariot wheels so they drove them with difficulty. I'm telling you, watch this. This is one of the most important parts of this message today. I need everybody to get this. You see, when you're walking in the total will of God and when you're walking in His plan, even though it looks like things might be working against you, God is going, He's committed Himself to us already. I believe one of the things we're going to see happen to individuals and to the church in 2022, just like for the children of Israel back in that day, God moved from the practical and the natural into the supernatural. God started doing supernatural things that nobody could see coming. Moses couldn't see it coming. Uh, Pharaoh didn't see it coming. The children of Israel didn't see it coming. Moses had a quiet confidence that just be still and be calm. God's got this. But then all of a sudden, the pillar of fire moved from the front, the Bible said, to the back. And that was the protection. During that time of protection, God spoke to Moses. Watch this. Go read this. God spoke to Moses and He said, Hold out your staff. He didn't say, Hold out my staff. He didn't say, I'm going to hold out the staff. He said, hold out your staff, watch this. And the next instruction said, and part the Red Sea. God gave Moses the authority to act in the supernatural. And at the obedience, I'm prophesying, at the obedience to the Word of God by the Spirit of God, God is going to begin to release the supernatural into that one that has their focus on God, that has their ear tuned towards Him, that is speaking for Him and doing that will that He has called us to do. I want you to get ready. How many wants to be a candidate for the supernatural to begin to flow through you? To be able to see something happen that no way... Holly, if you're listening to me today, there's a young lady that's battling cancer in the worst kind of way right now. And everything that the doctors have tried for three years now, it's not working and it's starting to really take its toll on her. And I told her the last time I talked to her, I said, Holly, I said, I know it looks bad and I know it looks dim, but I want you to hear what I'm saying to you today. That when it comes time for God to do what God's going to do, He's going to do it in such a way that it's going to be no mistake about it that it was God that did it. That it was God that did it. See, that's what happened in that day. Are you ready for this? How many in here are ready to embrace the supernatural? 
to see God bring about. I'm telling you, y'all, there's going to be a spirit of the supernatural released on the house of God in the year 2022 that we've talked about, we've prayed about, it's been prophesied, it's been spoken, it's been said, it's been declared and decreed. But I'm saying to those who will embrace it, God will knock the chariot wheels off of anything that's designed to destroy you. God will cause it to be driven with difficulty if it's coming your way. I'm telling you, God has a way of turning things around when it don't look like there's no way to turn it around. He said, am I not a one that makes a way where there is no way? He said, am I not the one that will take and make a crooked path straight? Oh, He is the one that's able to deliver us. And it's time for us not to cry in vain, but it's time for us to move away from there. It's time for us to move away from doubt. It's time to move away from discouragement. It's time to move away from the status quo. It's time to let God be God and let Him do what only God can do. God, I give you praise today. I give you glory today. I lift up your voice today. I lift you up, God. Come on, why don't you give him some praise in the house? Why don't you give him some thanksgiving that today is the day that the miraculous and the supernatural is being released in the house. Woo! The supernatural! Hallelujah. I believe it's inevitable. I think it's got to happen for the glory of God to return. Indulge me. Indulge me just. He said, my great glory in verse 17, will be displayed through that, through Pharaoh. I'm telling you, whatever, whatever the lawmakers are planning, whatever our Congress is planning, whatever the demise it looks like it's going to be, I'm telling you that the church is stronger and going to rise up. And if God has to begin to move in the supernatural, He's going to do it. So I want you to think about these next few little statements. I declare over you today that that thing that has mocked you, that thing that looks like there's nothing you can do about it, I'm telling you, some of your children have made decisions that it's, it's, it's weighing so heavy on you and it... It, you, you've prayed and you've asked God, watch this, you've even tried to make friends with it. But I declare as your pastor today in the name of Jesus that with the right heart and the right attitude, that thing that's been sent to destroy your children, God's going to turn it around. God's going to supernaturally turn it around to where it will not have that effect on you or your children. So that thing that has mocked you, you ready? Here's another one. That thing that has scared you, that thing that has tormented you, that thing that has held you captive, that thing that has put you in bondage. I'm getting, I'm telling you, I wrote this down this morning as I was sitting in my chair very early. It's getting ready. You ready? To come face to face with the glory of God. It's getting ready to come face to face with the only thing that can put it down and that's the glory of God. If the glory of God can make an axe head float, if the glory of God can cut off the waters of the Jordan, if the glory of God can split the sea and separate it and it stand on end, 
If the glory of God can make a donkey talk, if the glory of God can raise Lazarus from the dead, did they not say that if you would just wait, you would see the glory of God? So that thing that's tormented you, and you've even said it's too late, it's over, it's done. There's no way. It's coming face to face with the glory of God. Verse 18 says, watch this. It don't say if. It don't say maybe. Verse 18 says, when. Somebody say when. When. My glory is displayed. When my glory is released. When my glory is revealed. When my glory takes its place. All of Egypt, all of the world will see my glory and know that I am God. Give Him praise in the house today.